compression. And uh, Gauthier de Montmorin from Switzerland is here to explain how he did all that in Ada. Uh, well. Exactly. Yeah, thanks. Hello, everybody. So this presentation will be uh, hopefully not too painful uh, hour of about uh, lossless data compression in ADA. Or oh, I could not resist to put a buzzword variant of the title, enhance your data-centric compression to the extreme maximum by leveraging machine learning. <laughs> Okay, actually, there is some kind of primitive machine learning, so it's not all bluff, the <laughs> title there. <laughs> and the second part will be uh, about uh, more broader, about the, the Zip Ada uh, library. So it's about uh, Zip archive and compression. Now we begin with uh, small experiment. Uh, first we take a text and we compress it so you have a bunch of random bits uh, shown uh, with uh, pixels and then you concatenate text 1 and text 2 and you have a bit larger bunch of bits and the third one is only text to compressed. And as, as you see and as you have guessed, the compression of the part above text 1 is better than the text 2 alone. Because the algorithm has learned something from text 1. Of course, text 2 is similar to text one. It's why it works. Otherwise, it would be the other way around. Uh, let's see. Better with some animation. So I swap between uh, A and B. So text one and text one with two uh, concatenated. And you see this part is identical. OK, you will have spotted a few bits, but it's not. Uh, it's part of a header. It's before the compressed stream. So it indicates that this part uh, will contain the compressed version of text 2. And the interesting thing, it is much smaller than just compressing text 2 alone with just a uh, without uh, prior knowledge. So the conclusion is, like with sports and uh, other things, compression is better with a little training. So as I see it, perhaps there are more ways, but I see basically two ways of, of doing that. Either you compress, uh, say, the, the, the text one, and you save everything from the compression algorithm. The dictionary, the probability model, and the state of the, the finite state machine, basically. So you save all that. Actually, it can be a very, a very large uh, bunch of data, this uh, information, much larger than the things to be compressed. Or you use a prefix data. So you do actually exactly like in the experiment. You feed the algorithm with text one. But actually, you won't use it for in live. It's just for training the, the compression algorithm. And then the text two is what you want to, to compress. The advantage of um, the lazy way, so the, <laughs> the, the, the way to, is that you can just reuse a normal compression algorithm. You can leverage it as is. So 
what I've done is I've made a, a package that you, you can plug into onto a compression algorithm and it does the, the job. You don't, you don't have a uh, boring uh, API or very complex uh, data structures or for saving uh, things from the, the variant one and so, uh, stuff like that. There is one disadvantage, of course, when you run the compression side, it takes longer because you have to compress what was text one in the in the experiment, and it, it can be time consuming, but sometimes you, you don't uh, you don't mind. You are more interested in decompression often. So how where to use this um, trained compression. For instance, you anticipate having a um, large amount of data that are all similar together to some extent, of course, they are not <laughs> the same. So you can have a, you can have a sample you use a, as a training data and then you have thousands of different files. You, you don't know them in advance, so perhaps it's from something uh, over the internet. Uh, and you will always use the trainer file uh, first for uh, training the, the algorithm. And as uh, with the experiment, you will save storage. So perhaps if you have millions of, uh, of this uh, text to, uh, it can be a uh, large storage, or you can uh, save uh, transmission uh, time. <laughs> I kind of know an application <laughs> on the, this side <laughs> of the room. <laughs> and perhaps there are other advantages um, that can be uh, found, but see, it's what I've found by, by uh, developing that. So uh, how it works a bit graphically. So here you have the compression site and here you have uh, the decompression site. So basically you first you put your uh, training data, so the text one, into the, the compression engine and then your data and what will happen um, I need to, to say it's, it must be a streaming um, compression algorithm. So nothing that, that mixes the order of, uh, of the stream, or of, otherwise it, it won't work. But if it is a streaming like LZMA or deflate on LZ-based algorithm, for instance, you will have first the compressed training uh, stream, you discard it, you don't need it. But now the algorithm is trained, you know, the probability model is, uh, is trained and the dictionary is full with nice words from text one. And then comes data two and here you have a big wall uh, or a hurdle and you need to to send it over it's uh, slow or or um, expensive or whatever it's over the internet I don't know but you you want to uh, have a better compression for that so you have your compressed data ships there what happens on decompression side first you you stuff the compressed training stream, but of course it, this one was not shipped over the, the big hurdle. It was already known to the computer on the decompression side. So it's shipped only once in the life of the, this machine. So you, you put first the training uh, data and then the compressed data, which was of course unknown to the decompressor and what happens 
as you guess, you have the training decompressed, you, you discard it, you don't need it, and you get your data decompressed as you wanted. So here is the, the, the ADA specification of the of this um, train compression. So I didn't do uh, any fancy object-oriented uh, thing. It's only with generics. So you, and you don't have, um, it's very simple. You, you have only a function which give bytes and a function, a procedure which writes bytes in each time. But the difference to similar things, you have two input, you have the training input and the data input. On the decompression side, you also have two inputs, one for the compressed training and one for the compressed data. Because uh, you need two functions, because one is uh, will take locally from the local computer, basically, and the second one will receive from the big antenna <laughs> the interesting data. And then you have, uh, once you, you have provided these uh, pro uh, functions and procedures to have inputs and outputs, you have on encoding side encode, and it does the job. And you have also decode on the other side. So you are very, you were certainly impatient to see some results. So <coughs> I begin with perhaps with data where it's not too impressive. <laughs> so I have CSV files. It's uh, things that uh, economic data that you can download on, on the internet. So it's all public. It's also all on the SourceForge and repository and GitHub uh, mirror if you want to test it yourself. Um, yeah, with CSV files, uh, basically you have random data but a very restricted alphabet. You have uh, figures and commas and end of lines. So there is nothing that the training can bring actually. Uh, not a lot actually, at least. Uh, here you have, on the left side, you have um, Excel files, the, the binary, the old uh, binary um, format with plenty of metadata. And then you see it's much more efficient because all this metadata is present in all Excel files. So the, the training brings a lot. So perhaps in the last uh, eight or five percent, you have really squeezed the, the, the real information in these Excel files. And in the middle, I've just compressed the, the encoder <coughs> using the decoder as a training file. Of course, they are similar because you have the GNAT uh, runtime, and perhaps the debugging symbols and, and things like that. And you get a lot better uh, compression by training the, the algorithm. So here it's a Windows executable, so it could be different with different formats. But it's almost one quarter of what you would get with LZMA, which is a very good uh, algorithm. So now, uh, second part is more about the the, um, the zip ADA library. So what is it? It's uh, okay. We are at the right place here. It's a fully open source. And it's, we are in the right dev room, so it's fully in ADA. 
you know, don't need to even think about interfacing the, the stuff. Uh, usually it's the painful part of uh, using uh, mixing languages. And it's fully portable as long as you have a compiler supporting the uh, certain number of integer types, of course. Uh, so you, you need a complete EDA compiler with the necessary uh, integer types. So portability, you have just one set of sources. You don't have uh, magic with conditionals and uh, if def and this kind of things you use. Especially in compression software, usually you see kilometers of if def, define, include, uh, blah, blah. So that's not there. So more details about um, portability. So, uh, so as, again, there is no binding. It's uh, standalone. Um, it uses uh, ADA uh, streams and exceptions. You, you can uh, monitor, uh, control, analyze your program, including the compression library with the same tool set. And on the right hand, hand side, here is a, a list of platforms that, that where uh, Zip and EDA has been um, Use, uh, is in use or has been in use or for, for uh, some time. So I didn't check personally all the platforms, but I, I trust uh, people sending me uh, mails about it. If you have another platform, please uh, drop me a line because the bigger the list, the better. The history of Zip Ada, so uh, it's uh, 20 years old so soon. <laughs> so, first it was a, a bit ugly translation, it was only decompression. It was a translation of Pascal with some, uh, yeah was not so nice. And over the years, yeah, uh, I had a good idea or someone perhaps told me or recommended me to put it on an open source uh, platform. At the time, uh, SourceForge <laughs> uh, was the <coughs> number one or whatever. So in 2007, I've put it on, on SourceForge. And then the magic of open source began because people began to, to use it and soon after I got a nice contribution in 2008. So basically uh, this team in this company did a, a big chunk of the, the zip ADA library and they, they sent me per email. Uh, um, so there they, they have programmed the streams. Before it was only files. and. They, they did the zip ar archive creation site. And it's nice because uh, they, they did it uh, very orthogonally because you can have a, a, a zip archive in a stream. You can have everything in memory. That's, that's fantastic. Or whatever um, medium you want. You don't need files. So you can have your almost uh, kind of RAM disk or static RAM disk using a zip archive with a file system and everything. And then I got other contributions and, and I developed, uh, I have added some decompression things. And later I've added, okay, I, I have by the, the bullet, I've added a LZMA decompression. That was not so <laughs> easy, but fortunately, 
it was due to the fact that there was a, a well, finally a well-written uh, C++ simplified reference um, decoder for LZMA by the author of uh, LZMA. So I jumped on the, the wagon and uh, I've translated it into EDA. And then I wanted to do a bit more and uh, have uh, a strong compression. So I began with uh, deflate. And then it was in early 2016, then in <coughs> During the vacation of 2016, I did the uh, did, uh, LZMA uh, compression. Actually, it was easier than uh, anticipated because you can mirror many things you, from the decoder. You can just swap the bit inputs into output. And, and now, the, well, what I've presented uh, just earlier, the trained compression. So, what is, how does it compare to uh, other uh, methods and so on? There are plenty of uh, libraries. You have this, uh, if you check this uh, squeeze chart uh, site, uh, it's done by, by uh, um, an expert of, uh, of compression. It has hundreds of, of different schemes that, and he lists only those that are working. <laughs> and, and yeah, the, the problem with compression, uh, you, the, the, the definition of a good compression, it's a bit uh, shaky because some people want, just want to have a good compression ratio but uh, sometimes if you, it takes too long to decompress, it's not no more interesting because you, you have anyway, you have uh, good capacity in networks and so on. So it's also important to have a good decompression time or sometimes not. And, but uh, if it takes really too long to compress the data, it can be also a problem or perhaps not, because sometimes you have uh, something you, you compress once and it's downloaded uh, thousands of times, so do you can care or not about compression time. And finally, uh, that's more about the embedded systems. You have the, the question of memory footprint. Do you want to, to keep the, all the internal tables of the compression and decompression within a certain uh, within certain constraints. So here you have a, a picture with two of these criteria. So you have the compression ratio, so on the smaller the better. And here you have a log on the logarithmic scale um, the time of compression. So as you, and you guess, the, the more you, you go to the frontier of uh, compression, the longer it, it takes, uh, tendentially. So, uh, the, the zip ADA library is not the, the old best uh, on this part, but uh, perhaps, who knows, in a few years, uh, <laughs> with some effort and whatever. So a little bit about uh, the internals. So deflate and LZMA, uh, so the, the, the things I have implemented uh, relatively recently, there are both two uh, stages, two phases algorithms. So you have a first a string matcher, the, so the LZ77 algorithm. And then you have the entropy encoder to squeeze this pre-processed uh, signal, basically. And it's the same principle for 
deflate and LZMA, but with deflate you have Huffman trees. LZMA it's a range encoding, it's a much more powerful uh, uh, compression stream um, scheme for um, for entropy. So now how you again a, com a comparison only with the, the zip format. So here it's a, it's a kind of a standard uh, uh, benchmark uh, data set. Silesia corpus. Um, so here you have the, the 7-zip and uh, here it's info-zip, so the same as Zlib. B-zip2 and again 7-zip but with the LZDMA compression and here in green it's the results with, uh, with zip ADA. So it's not too, too bad. And one good thing uh, of the the fact that you, you it's in two phases, you can you can uh, pick and choose the algorithm, the string matcher, so the LZ77 part, and uh, see how it works with the the, the entropy coding. Sometimes you have sur surprises. So, for instance, I've picked uh, for LZMA something that was for deflate and it, it works pretty well. And uh, also for cer certain kind of uh, of data, I've discovered you it's better not to compress with the first phase. Just send the plain bytes, it compresses be better than with a string matcher. So uh, finally, uh, another, let's say, uh, innovation in, in the, the zip ADA library, you, you have a kind of meta method that leverage or that uh, correspond to the fact that in the zip file, each f entry, so each file in the art archive is compressed individually. So you can pick and choose the algorithm for compressing it, depending on the length, for instance, or the type of data. Especially the length, uh, I've noticed that the, the files that are shorter than more or less 9K, 9 kilobytes, they compress poorly with LZMA. It's, if you see the probability, all the, the tables for the probability model, you understand it needs a long stream to train <laughs> the algorithm. So an individual file uh, shorter than 9000, you can just forget LZMA, you take deflate and it, it's better. So that's for the presentation, and that's it. I make a little demo, perhaps. It will be, perhaps it's interesting, hopefully. So, so here, here you see a, a zip file. Okay, it's a spoiler for the next presentation, but I just show you the the contents with a user interface. In the meantime, ah, yeah, okay, the user interface is so you you see the a bit the the, <coughs> the contents. Okay, some text. I've put some text, some XML files, database, uh, and we'll see what happens uh, with different uh, schemes. So, oh, I do. so 
So I'm just uh, unpacking the thing with uh, the command line version, which is uh, shipped as a demo with the, the, the library on, uh, on SourceForge. And what can I do? Uh, ah, okay. It's, I can show you. Uh, well, when something is decompressed, you also have a hash code checking to, to be sure. Uh, so everything is fine. And uh, of course, you can, you can use the, the compressed file. So that's, there's no, uh, no magic. So for instance, I open this, this file and, oh, you see the, <laughs> the charts uh, that were before uh, and so on and so on. And now, if I... <coughs> for instance, I... Oops. So I recompress with the fastest uh, deflate, so the, the, basically the default uh, scheme. So you have a new uh, archive, as uh, expected. So now, let's say I'm paranoid, I'm not, uh, what is this zip ADA library? So there is a tool called compzip, which compares every contents of zip file but uh, byte by byte, on not only the, the hash codes. So. so it's checking, so it opens every entry of both uh, archive. Oh, everything fine. Oof. The, the. Now I'm, okay, I'm just showing the options of uh, so you have different uh, compression uh, schemes. And what I've just shown, uh, the latest, uh, this pre-selection uh, method, so meta method for doing pick and choose. So. So let's see. So for instance, the PDF, PDF files, it chooses LZMA with certain parameters. So you have 225 different ways of configuring uh, LZMA, for instance. And so you have different sets for different data types. So as you see, uh, the, the latest uh, compression, so we, with preselection, is hopefully <laughs> smaller than the, the one with deflates. And what can we do? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's it for the demo. I have some further slides, but I don't want to. <laughs> it's a bit technical, and uh, so I, I think I, I will stop. Um, I will stop the presentation here. But I'm sure there are yeah, <laughs> plenty of questions. <laughs> Actually, you have a technical question here that's concerning the uh, the trainable part of yeah. your algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So judging by the timeline, it was added like within the last year. I would suppose nowadays people would use recurrent neural networks. Uh, that would be the first thing that springs to mind. Then you ship like the training, uh, the topology plus training parameters to the other set and use. Uh, complementary uh, generative neural network to reconstruct the data. Is this the approach or? No, no, the, the, the approach is just feeding, it's uh, very uh, simple, just feeding data to the same, it's uh, very lazy, it's, uh, I just put into the compress compressor. So you just tune some of the parameters of the compressor. Uh, what is the pre-training in this case? 
the, the uh, all, all compressors begin with a neutral state. So you basically just train to, to, to shift the parameters. Exactly, so exactly, exactly. And it seems I'm, I'm very lazy. Instead of so saving... So your topology is fixed then, in other words. Okay, I see. But, but probably uh, there are smarter ways or using... You, you could well, use... Yeah, uh, yeah. Just as I right described, more. this one should be able to be... I mean, domain-specific data compression would, of course, be generic data compression. And it really depends on domain. You can get up to 99.99 <laughs> of course it really depends on the domain yeah. so that's why I was asking about the approach but since this is text like textual data we are talking about that's why I suggested RNN it, it was only for the the, the experiment but ah, you, you okay. can put the binary every yeah, you can put everything depending on the nature yeah. of data yeah. you would use different constructs yeah but um, as um, the chart uh, um, with the comparison, you had Excel file, so I've trained yeah, 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 that would be totally with an Excel file for mm -hmm. compressing an Excel file, and an executable was used for mm -hmm. compressing an executable from for the same machine, and so on. Mm -hmm. Of course, you leverage all the as a human when you put the the training data, you know, or you you guess it will be uh, yeah, similar. The, the best compressor kind of builds the model of the data, but then since you are operating with standard algorithms, your models are fixed. But okay, that's, yeah, I, I better let others ask the questions. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So Hello? is the training only for uh, LZMA? Because no, you, you, no, yeah, I've tested with LZMA because it's the the most powerful in the in the toolbox, but uh, <laughs> well, for instance, with uh, something like BZIP2, which is a block sorting algorithm, it's clear it won't work because everything is sorted in uh, huge blocks. So, <laughs> yeah, so the training only applies to certain compression algorithms. Yeah, which are um, uh, streaming compliant, if you want. So the the output stream is in the same order than the input stream, except it is uh, squeezed, uh, it's smaller. And again, with the, tra with the training, you, know, you, you surprised me with what you're showing me, because that's not what I thought you were going to do. It was the, I the ambition. <laughs> the idea of the, of the training was that you could train it on itself. So before you send it, you train it on itself by basically reading, the, although it's a stream, so yeah, uh, twice, uh, yeah, but then do you itself. would have uh, the perfect compression. Uh, no, no, <laughs> you would have uh, one. Instead of it building up or, or learning, you said it's a, a, yeah, LZMA yeah, it's is it's adaptive. Better. So as you get through whatever stream yeah, is, yeah, 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 you're getting better and better. Yeah, yeah. So by the time you come to the end, you really know this file really well. <laughs> then threw away your. your the data instead of transmitting it or doing whatever you want to do it if you then started processing the same file again yeah. you would be no yeah. you would have yeah, uh, you would have just compressed because you're missing the information on the other side well, the 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 the, 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 the I forgot the name where basically the idea is you are given a huge, huge file, text normally, and yeah. you are supposed to produce the best ever possible compressor, but yeah. the trick is you have to include the compressor itself in the size estimate, because mm -hmm. you could of course just simply yeah. yeah. and uh, write the one uh, like... No, no, but I, I, I think, I, I guess you, you wanted to, to refeed or you uh, restart... Uh, the, the, the compression, say, yeah, but I, 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 can, I, I, I can tell you what will happen. Because the dictionary, so, uh, probably uh, you, you have set it as long as possible to perhaps uh, contain the, the full decoded uh, stuff. The compression, the, the string matcher will notice that you just put the same... <laughs> So it, it will send a big, uh, just a single distance length code, 
just the length of the or your uncompressed uh, thing and with the distance as well that's it just one one code or perhaps a chunk if the lengths are limited uh, a string of lengths but yeah, uh, yeah. It won't help if you you want to send to machine B. Machine B uh, doesn't know of the, your your thing. Yeah. What, you, what you're sending over to machine B is a mixture of this dictionary and. So I show you again the the scheme. So oh. Oh, I have two <laughs> two instances. It's too much. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, stop! Stop! The car. Okay. So what you need to send is uh, this data in in all caps. Huh? So. Oh, we, we, data dash. Is what's yes. Yeah. Data dash is a mixture of the real data and some sort of. Or like that. Oh, Not uh, at all. It's the it, huh? data data uh, slash is just the compressed version of data. Yeah. Full full right. full point. So that's all you need to decompress it. Yeah. Right. yeah. And that wouldn't be better. And and data dash is generally is is the result of data. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you say you start off at, at, at it's all at a zero state when you started, so it doesn't know anything about the data that you're going to give it. Yeah, no, 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 if you, if you did, you you would need to. Exactly. If you, if the training and data are the same, basically, if you, you don't need to transmit it because the training data is is there. <laughs> That's it. Silently ship training data. Ah, okay. So broadly, one of the reasons Broadly is so good at source code and web fonts, and exactly yeah, yeah. at source code and web fonts, yeah, yeah. is that it, uh, it ships with two dictionaries. Ah. One dictionary of HTML and JavaScript, basically, yeah. and CSS, I think, and one of web fonts. And it's hidden. So it's, it's not part of the spec. It's just there are a number of bytes used during the initialization. Mm. They are supposed to be set like this. Yeah, yeah. These are actually two dictionaries. Ah, impressive. And it's shipped uh, as you well? Have on your computer, it contains two dictionaries. Ah, it's okay. It place. was. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you have some kind of a preset dictionary when you want to decompress uh, XML data or specific data. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. But, yeah. So yeah, they, they have specific di dictionaries. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, fantastic. Uh, you showed that uh, you, uh, you have worked on this personal project for like 20 years. Uh, do you have a secret of longevity for uh, <laughs> <laughs> the same project? Uh, well, the secret, secret is that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, do, you, do you have a recommendation for others who want to start a uh, project? Yeah, so the re recommendation is. Uh, Go for it because uh, it's uh, it's basically stainless. You, you can use your your code after years. Uh, it's almost boring because you, you have a new version. <laughs> you don't need to to adapt to a new uh, version of a compiler or, or whatever. It's uh, you, you you can do instead of fixing these compiler things or compatibility things. You can start other projects or uh, or go ahead with uh, <laughs> the same project for the next 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. What, what, you, what yeah. you didn't say though, there, you talked about source, source code, but you've got this on GitHub as well. Yes. 
because uh, I've noticed uh, yeah, there's some, uh, some fashion shifts to... Uh, yeah, it was on the history, but uh, okay, I have some... If you go at the end of the hidden slides... <laughs> Sorry, huh, that's... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, here, yeah, here. Oh, did I forget? <gasps> I forget the, the GitHub. Oh, oh, it's terrible. But uh, you, 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 you will find, you, you Google uh, GitHub, Zipeda, and uh, should be, should be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again. Um, Here we go.